If you've been card making for a while, you might have tried silhouette stamping, but have you tried reverse silhouette stamping? Today, I've got one card both ways. Let's get crafting. We're going to start out by ink blending a panel. Now, I've cut my Artist Loft watercolor paper to three and three quarters inches by five and I'm laying down my replacement silicone mat from Tim Holtz. It goes with my glass mat that I actually use on my other desk. Uh, I am looking for the, smooth or the smoother side of the cardstock and I am blending first off broken china. So we're gonna blend that at the bottom. It goes on a little splotchy at the beginning but as you build color, it will level out. I'm gonna blend the broken china about one third of the way up on my cardstock. Best practice is to start your ink blending in a circular motion off of your card panel and then blend in with the ink so that you don't end up with any harsh lines on the card itself. Continuing on the ink blend, I'm bringing in Mermaid Lagoon next. And you'll notice that I do use a different blending brush. I have about 12 blending brushes and I do just use my fine mister to sort of rinse out my blending brushes between colors and wipe them dry on a paper towel. The Mermaid Lagoon color goes on um, just slightly darker than the Broken China. And if I had wanted a little bit more contrast instead of the Broken China, I could have used Tumble Glass, but I just wanted a really fine gradient between the three colors. Once you've got your initial middle color down, you're going to go back to your lighter color, in this case Broken China, and you're going to reload your brush and you're going to bring that color up into the Mermaid Lagoon. And you're going to continue to go back and forth, Mermaid Lagoon into Broken China, Broken China into Mermaid Lagoon, until you get the look that you're seeking. The last color I'm choosing to use is Uncharted Mariner. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Go ahead and lay on the initial color and then go back to my lighter color, which is the Mermaid Lagoon, and bring that up into the Uncharted Mariner in order to achieve that blend. When you're layering up as much ink as I am doing, you want to make sure you keep your fingers and therefore your fingerprints out of your inky panel. So in this case, I'm just using a piece of scrap paper so that I have a good hold on my cardstock there. And uh, sometimes I just use the, the lid of my Distress Oxide container. It really does depend on what I'm doing, but I didn't want to create any lines. I want this to be a super smooth blend. The more I use Uncharted Mariner, the more I like it. I love the coverage that it gives and that deep, dark blue that uh, only the sky can really represent. I'm gonna show you where I got my inspiration in just a little while. Back to my Mermaid Lagoon to go ahead and bring that color up into the Uncharted Mariner to finish off that blend. At this point, I realized that the blend between my bottom two colors is a little splotchy, so I'm going to go ahead and go back in with Broken China and just level it out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set my panel aside so that it can dry, and truth be told, I let it dry while I fix dinner. I absolutely hate wasting perfectly good craft supplies, so I'm using cleanup as an opportunity for a little ink smushing. I just add some finely misted water over my ink that needs to be cleaned up, and I just kind of dab on my card panels. Now, I always have card panels and card bases pre-cut. That way I can just grab one and continue on. Sometimes I actually use a card panel that I've already made and I just add to the color. Using my heat tool to go ahead and dry that first layer of ink, I still have plenty of ink on my silicone mat, so once I add that second layer, it adds more depth of color. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, please give me some pixie dust by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. 
For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Wendy from Village Card and Crafts, and I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. The goal of my channel is to show you how to be inspired by the things that you love. And for me, it's typically all things Disney, but today is a little different. I just got back day before yesterday from Washington, D.C., and I got to explore and oh, it was amazing. I've got tons of pictures, hundreds of them, literally. And uh, this first one I'm gonna share with you is a picture from the first night that we were there. We went on a nighttime bus tour of 10 monuments and the Washington Memorial was amazing. And I got this great shot. And this is where I got the inspiration for doing reverse silhouette. But I wanna show you how to do regular silhouette first and then we're gonna move into reverse silhouette. Note that the Washington Monument is lighter and stands off of the dark blue background. Now that my panel is dry, I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the inside of my stamping platform using VersaFine Black Onyx Ink and this stamp set from Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz Collection. Um, I really like this because the florals in it are solid but they're small, but they could be large if you wanted them. It's a really versatile stamp set and I'm just kind of placing out where I want them on my card panel. You'll notice that I'm leaving space and the reason is I'm going to be adding um, a dimensional element to my card. Unlike most silhouette stamping, the silhouette is black, it's all black, it's stunning, it's striking against the, the contrast of whatever background you choose, but I wanted a three dimensional element. I did have to switch over to my magnets because my low-tech tape wasn't holding. I inked up my stamps really well and I'm giving them a firm press, giving them just a second, and then I'm gonna go ahead and restamp again. If I had used acrylic blocks, um, I don't think my stamping would have come out as well. You can still do it, but I highly recommend some form of a stamping platform here. With my stamping done, I've got an A2 card base in black, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, and a metallic gold in four by five and a quarter. Now, I am using some rectangular nesting dies from scrapbook.com, and here's another quick tip. I told y'all that I hate wasting supplies, so I took a smaller rectangle die and I'm going to cut that out of the gold because all I need is a frame that's a little wider than the blue card and uh, then I save the gold metallic card for another use. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue and I'm going to go ahead and glue that gold frame down to my black card base. Editing usually allows me to edit out the parts I don't like but today I decided to show my blender and right there, I drop my frame onto my black card base, but it doesn't matter. Just pick it up and keep going because I'm gonna go ahead and cover that black part with my blue panel anyway. We'd love to have you stop by on Facebook and join the Village Card and Craft community. Over there, you'll be able to show other like-minded creators what you've created based on being inspired by one of my videos. Using my same glue, I'm going to go ahead and glue the blue panel down to the gold frame. Now, on my second card, I change this up just a little bit and use tape because where you see me glue the center part, you'll actually be able to see that coming through on the inked panel. You may not be able to pick that up on screen, but I can see that it's there. But once again, I'm just going to keep going because I've already invested time and supplies into that panel and I can cover that up with a sentiment. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some florals for my 3D elements. I'm using Sizzix Thinlets, this one's called Wild Blooms, and I cut out a large and a small bloom, their centers and their stems, all in black cardstock. Using my fingers, I'm going to bend the petals inward to create a three-dimensional flower. I'm 
I put a little dot of my Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue in the center of my floral and using a stick tool, I go ahead and lay my center in. I know it's hard to see here, but that little extra detail really does make a difference. Repeat the process for the second flower. When I remove the acrylic block from my card, that's when I realize that I can still see the glue marks. But again, it's nothing to worry about. It's going to get covered up at the end. Here, I want to fill in my three-dimensional. I want them to be sort of in front of my stamped images. Um, and I want them to pop up a little. So I am going to use a foam dot behind the head of the flower, but I'm going to glue the stem on flat. So my process is to kind of try out the stem and the petals of the flower to see where I want it. And ultimately I decide that I'm going to leave it on the bottom. So the stem in its entirety is really too long for my card, but that's okay. I'm just going to put glue on the part of the stem that's going to be adhered to my card, and then I'm going to pop up that floral head. Maintaining the dark quality of the silhouette was really important to me, but I did want to give my card a lift. So using die cuts was a great alternative to simply stamping. There was a small blank spot, so I decided to fill that out with some of the leftover leaves from the stem. If you're a returning subscriber to my channel, I just want to say thank you for continuing to support my channel and for coming back to watch new content. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I would love to have you join the Village Card and Craft community. So if you're finding value from the content that I provided today or on any of my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. There are two major goals that a YouTube content creator must achieve. The first one we are mighty close to, that is to reach 1000 subscribers. And I've given myself the deadline of June, so it's just around the corner. So again, if you'd please consider hitting that subscribe, I would really appreciate it. The second goal is reaching 4,000 watch hours, and that's a huge goal, let me tell you. So I'm about halfway there. So the best thing that you can do for any content creator that you really enjoy is to finish watching each of their videos in the entirety so they get credit for their entire time. So without further ado, let's finish up these silhouette cards and let me show you how I did the reverse silhouette card as well. I've made a second blue panel, but I'm not sure if it's dry. So here's a quick way to figure it out. Just use some embossing powder on your inked panel, cover it, dump it out. If anything sticks, it's not dry enough for you to emboss yet. Much like Washington's monument being white and standing off the background, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Exactly the same way as the original black silhouette, except I'm going to go ahead and stamp in white unicorn pigment ink and I'm going to cover it with white embossing powder. Since you already have your stamps out, why don't you head over to this video right here to do some more stamping and card making. This came out beautifully. I did choose to go ahead and use some glossy accents on the leaves and I left the sentiment off for the time being. And finally, our original silhouette card, complete with a happy birthday sentiment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon.